Hey guys, it's Susie Lolly, and in tonight's video, we're going to talk about using Canvas Studio. It was kind of a new tool to me. I had fun exploring it. So if you're in need of a video creation tool or an interactive video maker that works right inside Canvas, well, you're in the right place. Stay tuned. So where is Studio? If your district or your school has enabled it, which the free account does not have it, I'm sorry. If you're just using Canvas free, then this is just a preview of things to come at some point in your life. But anyway, if you'll look down your left-hand side, your um, global navigation bar, you're going to see it looks like a YouTube uh, screen with a bunch of little octopus legs coming out. I'm assuming it's showing how the information can be disseminated, but it looks like an octopus TV screen to me. So when you find that icon, you're going to click it, and then we will explore how the buttons work in just a minute. The first time you come into Studio, it'll look just like this, so I deleted my little placeholder there, and I will re-add it. And the navigation's pretty simple. Up in the top right corner, you have four major buttons. This one I have not found a reason to use yet, but Record, you can capture just your screen or your webcam, but even if I choose to capture the screen, it will still give me the option to include my webcam. Now, because I'm already on a webcam with you or already on a screen, it may not, hey there, <laughs> I actually can be in two places at once. Um, so I chose screen recording, but it remembered that last time I chose screen recording, I wanted a webcam in the bottom right. It just really does help add personality, and if you don't wear makeup and wear your hair really messy, it'll capture that for people. Um, so anyway, you can capture just your screen, which is what I'm going to do right now. Add your webcam for that voice in, you know, picture in picture kind of thing, or you can capture both, whatever you need to do. The first time you launch this, it will ask you to download a little program. It's safe as far as I can tell. It's from Canvas. Um, and it just will, you'll just launch that after you download it, you'll launch it and then you'll be able to come back. It was very easy for me to just click and download. You'll also have options to include computer audio or not. So if you want them to hear some sounds that are coming from your computer, just be aware of that. And then there are other preferences here, all kinds of stuff. I didn't touch any of those and I was still able to make a video. Okay, so I'm in my screen recording. I'm choosing, I can see my microphone there. You can tell it what size, and this is important to note. It's gonna capture only what's in this box, and when you first make the box, it comes in kind of small, but you see these little draggy handles. I always, used to like, always love to use that as a technical term, draggy handles. <laughs> so you can resize it, and then when you're ready to record, but you can't guess, there's just a little red button right there. Um, so you would record and then it would capture that video right here into Canvas. Now mine is taking forever to quote the Sandlot. So um, I'm not even going to show you a finished one, but I'll show you some other options in just a minute. So I'm going to pause here. Let me show you another option. So I've canceled my screen recording. And again, I found that just under the record button. Here's one that does go very fast, okay? You can, first of all, upload a video that you've already made and, and canvas size it. I'm gonna show you how you can make it interactive in a minute. So you can do that, but something that's really easy and quick is just to paste a YouTube URL. I know a YouTuber you might like. Let me go get one of her videos. I found it. So you can just paste a YouTube URL. Now you can already embed, there's me. <laughs> You can already embed YouTube uh, in you know, lots of places on Canvas, but this is going to allow it to be added to a collection for easy organization and sharing. It's also gonna be able to be made into an interactive video. So those are the main buttons. You can record straight into Canvas, but mine took forever to process, like I said. So did uploading a video, but it was a bigger video. So your internet may be faster than mine. If you do this at school, go for it. My internet was just slow because I'm here at home and maybe it was a bigger video. But you can add a whole collection of videos, but even better than that, if you want to keep them organized, you'll actually build a collection that's called that. And I might call mine um, Canvas for Littles. Gosh, I'm so predictable. Um, I could create a, a shortcut for that that has a folder. Um, if I go back, follow the breadcrumbs here and go back to my library, I could create one for a novel I'm teaching. To kill a Mockingbird. Okay. Whatever it is, but you can create collections and then share those. So once I've made a video, if I have not moved it into the collection, I can just click these three dots 
Some people call this a snowman, okay? <laughs> and then I can move that into my Canvas for Littles collection or make a new one. And then I'll show you in just a minute how I can do more with that. We'll get into some sharing features in a minute, but before we do that, if you'll go again to, I guess your snowman, um, on the particular video. So I have opened the collection, I've gone to view, I've gone to the particular video and I'm gonna click here. I, what I wanted to show you is this create quiz feature. I like this a lot. Now there are a lot of people doing this now, but it's because the world is finally realizing it's not just a certain tool, but it's a best practice that kids need um, grouped practice. They don't just need to wait till they get to the end of something and then try it. They need to have little bits of practice along the way, little bits of application. And I know I talked about this in another video, but the 10 and two rule. Um, I got that from Learning Focus Schools, Max Thompson years ago, that kids can only process about 10 minutes of information before they need to um, apply it in some way. And that has gotten way shorter in the digital age. So uh, just keep that and it's called spaced retrieval. I was trying to remember what I was gonna say. So anyway, video quiz title, give it a title. I'm gonna call this button based homepage, whatever instructions that you wanted to put here. You can hide question markers so kids never know when a question is going to pop up. They have to really be paying attention and they don't try to, you know, skip ahead or do anything like that. It's totally up to you. I'm not going to at this, mo at this moment. I'm going to click get started. And then this is a big deal. If you just click this plus right now, it's going to add a question at zero minutes. Now you could do that if you were being purposeful. But if you actually want to put a question at a certain spot, then you're going to push play. Because we're talk we're my hair talking was so about short using there. Canvas for little kids. <laughs> Not what all my fellow friends in Canvas And you say can do, scrub ahead I... and you can say, okay, this is where I want a question. I'm going to put right there. And y'all know I do not love my own face being on there like 50 times. <laughs> um, I can click the plus sign. I can add whatever kind of question I want to. I'll just do true, false for sake of time. This video is helpful at this particular moment. You could really ask something like that. Um, you know, at this moment, are you understanding? It could be something as simple as that. Um, you can always give feedback just like you always can in Canvas. Now, it's not as fancy here. There are no GIFs that I can tell. Uh, and then I'm just going to click Save. And now there's a question there. And then I can go ahead. Right, because that, we're talking about things that make your... Okay. And then again, I'm just adding true, false, but there are lots of types or three types. I will use the button factory to make cute buttons. And you would just tell it if it's true or false. I did not on the last one, okay? And then when you are done, there are some settings you can click here if you need to go back and change anything. And then I'm just gonna click done. And now I can see that I have a quiz made out of this video. What can you do with that? Stay tuned. So it is at this point that I considered scrapping the whole video that I had just made because I, again, it's a limit of whatever accounts I have. Um, when you're trying to share your interactive video with students, you have to have the little octopus TV on your rich text editor or as the new term is rich content editor. So on a page, on a discussion or on a quiz uh, or an assignment, anywhere you can see that little uh, that toolbar that looks like Word, 
is where you're going to be able to insert your studio interactive videos for students to access. That's kind of an important feature. So I didn't want to scrap the video, but I just don't have that feature turned on in any of my four accounts. Five, I have tons of Canvas accounts, y'all. So anyway, um, if you will just pause the video or come back at the end and watch this, because I'm actually going to show you something really cool on the next. So you might just want to come back and watch this, but this will show you how students access the interactive videos. So for the last part of the video, I want to give a shout out to Mallory Cameron. You can see her video here was about teaching a virtual lesson through Canvas Studio. She gave me a couple of ideas that I wanted to share with you, and then one she didn't share I would like to add to it. So sometimes when you are teaching a virtual lesson, you need a really good whiteboard. So I'm going to clear off my screen here, and I want to show you what to me is the best whiteboard out there, but that's just me. If you're a Google school, you can use Jamboard, and the way you get to that, this is not the one I was advertising, but you know, I'm a Microsoft girl, but I can use both. Um, if you go to, just go to Google and search Google Jamboard. If you're using Google Meet, you already know about Google Jamboard, but you can create a Jamboard, which is a digital whiteboard, get started, whatever, I just need to log in, okay. You can create a jam board and then share it with people and it's a whiteboard. I have heard there's a 50 person limit. I cannot verify that because I do not use Google as enough, you know, to know that. But anyway, a jam board is just one way that you could take, you could use that screen recorder in Canvas, capture your screen while drawing on a jam board. You also could just use a blank PowerPoint slide or a blank Google slide to do that. Um, here's a third way or a fourth way, I guess is I'm going down, I know this is below you, um, what you can see on the screen, but I'm searching for a program called Microsoft Whiteboard. I've already installed that from the Microsoft Store. It's free on a Windows machine. Um, so if you're, if you're working on, like I'm on a Dell laptop right now, if you're on a Windows machine, then you can grab Whiteboard absolutely free. You just sign in with your school credentials. And then it gives you this beautiful digital whiteboard that you can draw on. So you're in the middle of a lesson, and I do have a pen here, so I'm going to use it. Okay, so you're in the middle of a lesson, and you want to talk about the plot diagram. You can draw that. Um, it has a ruler that you can turn to a certain angle. I'm using two fingers to snap that. This is a touchscreen computer. Let's make it exactly zero. Come on, people. It's not whatever. It's going to be a one degree <laughs> angle. Anyway, but I can draw straight lines with that. I can do all kinds of stuff with it. It's got sticky notes in there. It's got text that I can type. I can add pictures or I can take a picture. I also love to take like a PowerPoint slide and put that in there as a template or a PDF or something. There are stickers in here, y'all. This is why it's my favorite. I mean, where else can you find Fruit Cruise stickers that come right on into your whiteboard? I mean, totally unnecessary, but lots of fun. And I still have my pen for whatever reason, so I'm, instead I'm going to lasso, get him out of the way, lasso my cute little fruit crew. You know, you get the point. But if you need something like that, then whatever your platform is, it doesn't have to be Microsoft. I just like this whiteboard. But you can use Microsoft Whiteboard, Jamboard. You can use, again, a blank slide. And then the one that Mallory gave me the idea for um, it's actually below my screen right here too, but I want you to imagine with me, <laughs> or you can search if you're on a Windows machine, just search for Windows Ink Workspace. It looks like a pen with a line around it. And mine is only showing two options anymore, but a shortcut to get there is, let me write it actually out in text here. It's, if you're on a Windows machine, it's Windows and Shift and the letter S. So think of S for snip. So I'm gonna push that right now, Windows Shift S. And it will say, hey, do you want to draw a box around something, which is the traditional snipping tool? Do you want to do like a more um, curvy snip? Do you want to snip the whole window or do you want to snip the whole screen? So if I snip a window, it would take a picture of just the program I'm in right now. And then it would give me a little notification out to the side of just this window. Okay. And then you can draw on that. So if you had a worksheet you needed to take a picture of that was maybe a PDF and you wanted to give your kids some examples, I love this for that reason, that you can take a picture and draw on it or you have blank whiteboards that I've just shown you as well. So I hope you'll consider taking the Canvas Studio screen record option and adding into it some kind of a whiteboard during your video so that your kids can see your face but also see you whiteboarding. Hope this helps. 
Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you wanna gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.